Hey everyone, this is Michael from Barton Musical Circuits. Uh, this is the diode break shaper schematic. Um, I'm gonna start with the audio input. Uh, pretty basic, goes through this uh, pot to attenuate it down, and then that goes into this buffer, which then gets sent to five different 10K resistors that are all uh, facing the same kind of setup where it is a 10K going to uh, a buffer and with two Schottky diodes uh, front to back with each other uh, that are referencing different voltages. So uh, this will be a, a more positive voltage up here and this will be a more negative voltage down here. So what happens here is if the input voltage that's coming down this line down over here gets higher than this voltage, uh, the diode is then gonna pass that current through there and then back to its voltage source. And so it's gonna make it so the voltage is clamped at the voltage levels that these two diodes are at. Uh, and the 10K is there uh, partially to separate things out so that you don't have the clamping here affecting the clamping there. Uh, and it's also there to make sure that there is uh, a little bit of resistance to make that voltage drop easier. You need some resistance. Uh, to make sure that it can efficiently drop that voltage as the current gets pushed through. Because the diodes can only push so much current, they can't literally push everything. So we will get to where these voltages come from in a second, but uh, let's talk about the rest of the audio path first. We go through these 10K resistors to the wipers of these pots, and the two outsides of the lugs of these pots are going to a differential pair. Uh, and all of these are wired the same. So it's, you know, every single pot is getting mixed together uh, and then going to these two uh, inputs of the differential amplifier. So when the pot is centered, you're going to have the same amount of voltage going to both inputs and they'll cancel each other out. As you start to move the knob clockwise or counterclockwise, more signal is going to go to one input than the other. Uh, and then all of a sudden you'll have more of the inverted signal or more of the non-inverted signal that's being passed out of the differential amplifier. Uh, so, yeah, like it says, it's taking the difference between the two signals on it. Um, and then that that's just going to go to this final stage, which is another inverter uh, that has a little bit of extra gain to it from the 120K. Uh, and then these 5.1 volt zeners, that's just setting the output voltage uh, to never exceed 5.1 volts. Uh, so just once it goes over 5.1 volts, that zener, the zener pair is just going to pass it straight on, ignore the... Uh, resistor and have negative feedback and clamp it. Um, and that's because we can have really high outputs that are coming from this differential amplifier. So we didn't want to make it so that this becomes so, so much louder than everything else uh, in your system. Um, but yeah, let's go back to look at these voltages that uh, we have over here. That's coming in, uh, starting with the POSLEV and POSCV uh, pots. The initial version of this design had positive and negative uh, CVs separated, but uh, I simplified it down to just having one control for both, and I forgot to change the name. Uh, so I probably would have called it like brake lev and brake CV uh, because it's controlling where the voltages like break away from each other. Um, but these get mixed together uh, because this is referencing 12 volts. Uh, it is going to be a much larger signal than the you know plus five volt signal you might see from the CV. So we use this 200k to uh, attenuate that down into the mixer, uh, and this is going to mix those and also invert them because we're going to the inverting input of this op amp. And so you know if we were getting uh, plus five volts here and zero there, we would end up having negative 2.5 volts over here. So that negative 2.5 is going to get sent all the way down here. And so negative 2.5 would be the reference voltage for this zener here. And then it's going to go down these three uh, 100K resistors. So that is going to lower it by a third each time. Now, if I was smart, in fact, I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to say this was six. So then this is negative three. And then this is negative three. And so then that means that this would then be negative two, and this would be negative one. And uh, doing that makes it easier on the math, uh, so that it's a number that's easily divided by three. Um, and as you would change the voltage, uh, you know, that became six volts over there, then this would become, uh, you know, six, four, and two. 
Um, and so that's, that's how we're getting a single input that is controlling all of these because we're just dividing down to uh, referencing ground for everything. And we have these 0.1 UFs here to store a little bit of current and to make sure that any AC signal that's getting clipped here is going to get just uh, grounded out and not affecting, you know, the other things around yeah. it. The And so our negative three volts here is then going to go to this other inverter and become positive three volts here, which then becomes two and one there. Um, and so that's, uh, and so yeah, that's how we have just, you know, one knob is creating six different voltage levels. Um, and that is pretty much how it works. Uh, it's the standard power thing that I have for everything of the 10 ohm input resistors and then a bunch of caps to filter things out. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much how this one works. Thanks so much for watching.